Wait for me. <laughs> <laughs>
cherry picked. Cherry picked? Uh, yeah, invited, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. To be on the like you know the application for funding to like the Swedish Art Council. Yeah. And that started in time? Like 2018. Yeah. Early and then we got cleared that the project was gonna happen in late 2018. Mm -hmm. And then you went to Thomas for the first time? Yeah. Yes, yes. And looked in the archives, these letters. Was there anything else except for letters in the archive? Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of materials. Like, uh, maybe not, I mean, like the, I think the drive behind the, like, well, like the uh, correspondence in mm -hmm. the first place was like to spread their, like, music. Mm -hmm. So like there was a lot of like you know exchanges of like you know tapes and like LPs and stuff like that, uh, but as a kind of like a collateral thing, you also like you sent in like you know you sent uh, letters and you sent like maybe like posters for gigs or like fanzines and like drawings things like that, and these things like are present in the but most of the tapes and the LPs of course are, are you know gone mm -hmm. <laughs> listened to and like you know. Yeah. But like the the remaining things are these like you know the things on paper. Yeah, and it's not it's not only letters. It's also like pictures yeah, and maybe yeah, yeah. small collages and other artworks. Mm. Something that you can. And I mean, like even like the the, the things that like like you know they they, yeah. they sent the yeah. things in. Like some of yeah. them, like you could consider them like you know mail art. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Mm. Um, yeah. So just one uh, one in a time. What was your approach when you saw this archive? Where, what were your first thoughts? What to do with it? How to work with it? Well, material? I mean, when I first saw the archive online, um, which was where we all saw it first, it, it was shared with us. I immediately went to the language. That's where my, my background is, uh, and I went to the content, the, the actual content, not the aesthetic necessarily of, of the letters, uh, but the things that people were writing, because that's seems the source to understand the, the whole ethic behind punk because this just wasn't about punk music this was the the second wave of punk it was in the 80s diy mm -hmm. is at the core the very core of it do it yourself um so these people from different cultures different parts of the world in different political situations some people experiencing war at this at this time you know mm -hmm. but we're corresponding centrally about a shared love of a particular type of music but there are other things influencing these people, and what is it that brings them together to enable them to create such an effective worldwide youth peer support network, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I was looking at. When we actually got to the archive itself, that's that's different, and I think we all had different um, approaches, or, or a, a great light was shown on the archive when we actually got there sort of physically, but we can always talk about that. Mm. Uh, well, me as a visual artist, I was of course drawn to the, you know, the, the look of the things, uh, and a lot of my practice is based, it's like drawn like you know uh, materials from like collage or like collage processes. So I of course like yeah, I'm gonna make a like a fanzine out of these, like you know, collage these materials into like a fanzine of my own, it's like a fanzine of fanzines. Sort mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. Um, and I was trying to like, boil down or like you know find the essence of like you know what some sort of maybe like a universal language or like some sort of like vibe, you know, to capture the whole thing. Whether I succeed or not, I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got what I got. Yeah, really nice. Idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, besides uh, for me being fascinated with with uh, books, I'm also kind of collecting for boxes and a lot of times I put my books into boxes so I mean the the most com I mean the most natural thing for me is to use the cassette which mm -hmm. was like an uh, iconic object for the 80s mm -hmm. and how this this was the way they distributed their music between themselves so I used um, the cassette the cassette box to put my books into it so I was playing with this was I was playing with this idea of um, of a treasure box uh, to put this little treasure uh, of visuality of the of the letters into the cassette uh, box. So the first time I saw the the letters in in live 
it, it was in the archive and I was attracted to the visuality of the, of the letters, that tactile uh, tactile thing uh, about papers and the little traces of of the using the stamps yeah, and of, like of the reading, wear of tear, tearing, yes. of uh, creasing the paper. I just see the all the all the past into it. So yeah, I was influenced by that, and I I use it to make those two little books. Uh, one was. Was filled with visuality of the of the letters, and the other one, I used text uh, as a found poetry, and I also used uh, Dominic's poems in, in the second book. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And you also made holes in it, so well, it looks like a tape. I had to do it yeah. so I can I can close. Oh, I can close of course, it. it's Because otherwise, it wouldn't be possible ah, to close I the book. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, but, yeah, it's it's. It's, I think it's um, it's um, how do you call it? Um, Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Very nostalgic, but also very very nice. Too. Yeah. Uh, and of course, if, if we are talking about uh, letters and such, so I have yeah, I just would like to ask, what's your personal relationship to letters and do you have pen pals? <laughs> um, I know you guys have been talking about this a little bit, yeah. a little bit earlier um, I, and I have to terrible be, being the man of letters uh, I, I have to step back and say ah, you know it has been so so long since I've handwritten almost anything that I I've almost lost that lost that skill mm. you know it's it's it's, it's using keyboards yeah. it's, it's maybe even using yeah. using the phone. Um, but in to try and reconcile myself, um, <laughs> not sound so bad. I, I think I do a lot in here. Yeah. Um, certainly in, in my own composition of poetry, I tend to do that. I tend not to write things down, and it's not um, traditionally the idea of the pen or the pencil touching the page. It's something that I do when I'm out walking, when I'm when I'm travelling. I, I I kind of voice things in my head, and then probably speak them aloud. Um, and then re-edit them in my head. So, so I do feel like it's a composition process when I'm uh, yeah. when I'm creating my my poetry. Yeah. Um, As a I, child, did you have pen pals or? Um, no, I, I I used to run up and down and talk to myself most of the time as a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's definitely fun. I just thought it was really uh, a fun question. So. <laughs> yeah. I think I did it like maybe like once or twice, like growing up, like just as a school project maybe. I also like I, I pitied the fool. Uh, I, I, I pitied the person who has to read my handwriting. <laughs> 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 it's like, um, but like I, 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 you know, as before, we were talking about like this um, divide between you know letter writing, you know, back then mm -hmm. when it was like a necessity mm -hmm. before the internet, mm -hmm. you know, and how like I think like this was a personal thing. But now, if you write, or like you use the internet to communicate, it's much more, you know, impersonal. It's like even if you write something like really personal, you don't really know how who's gonna read it, and like it doesn't have that physical, you know, tactile thing to it. I guess that's kind of like lost. I mean, like people still do write physical letters and send to each other, um, but that's not out of necessity, but of like maybe some. In love of the material and yes. like in the format and like you know they do become very precious now yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Like unless that. you have to wait for the snail mail to arrive you know it's like a, the anticipation thing is like a, an added yeah. bonus yeah. yeah i know from a personal experience there's a lot of people that write letters these days i have a good friend she writes letters every day i have a full box of her letters the first letter i got from her made me cry and it's completely different from texting, from email, because those layers of tactility... Tactility? Is that the word? Mm, yeah. Okay. And uh, choosing a font, choosing, a, choosing paper, choosing what you're going to put in that letter, it's completely different. It has layers and layers and layers of reading, and it's, it's precious experience, mm. definitely. Yeah. I do remember writing postcards, though, yeah. during my backpacking years. Yeah. yeah. So that did that. Yeah. that that's yeah. true. And was it was it uh, fun to choose the picture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I always like I never I never went for shit. Yeah. 
photographs? Yeah, no, no, I never went for these, like, you know, the, I don't know, I went for these, um, like, touristy things. I would always go to, like, some flea market and find some, like, some old things. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, like, usually, like, from the 80s and 60s and 70s or something like that. Like, maybe, like, picture or, like, something like architecture or, like, or here's the World Fair or, like, whatever, from that town. Mm -hmm. It's, like, really open. And so those is dead. But uh, postcards are different because they don't have that... A cover yeah, of a letter, because yeah. when you get a letter, you don't know what's inside, mm. and in postcard, you know. Sometimes, you sometimes you put a postcard in a letter if you want to be precious about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it a letter or is it a postcard? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a letter because it it's a, it a, will be a letter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really nice. This is. I think this is interesting as well. And I also a spontaneous question is like. Now we have this material, we are very fond of it and we feel like, oh, this is precious. But today, when we are networking with like more emails and texts and such, how do you think the future artists will try to work with that? Uh, you do mean, you mean someone's going to make a, an archive project yeah, about our correspondence now? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a very tricky question, yeah. but I think it's it's interesting. We don't need an answer to that. Yeah, but I think people are more uh, more sensitive to tactility now. Mm -hmm. Is that a word? Oh, no, I like that word. Um, well, physicality. Physicality yeah. of the thing, Touching because things. the more time we spend on the internet, the more we have the need to touch mm -hmm. books, especially, yeah. and I think more and more books, books that, are, that are produced today that have more that tactility mm. feel, physicality mm -hmm. feel, different kinds of paper. I think uh, people need that touch. Yeah. Maybe we, we are going back to... Uh, yeah, I think in a commercial world, if you, yeah. if you think specifically about music and books, mm -hmm. Both those industries move to digital media, mm. you know, MP3s and mm. e-books. Mm. Um, and I think those moves were great prompts for a resurgence in the artifact. And so books, as a result of people moving to e-books, the books that, physical books that were being produced became much higher quality again. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, because, yeah. because the e-book replaced paperbacks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, the idea of, of the beautiful books came More back. Precious. And similarly, the cassette and vinyl Mm. Another resurgence. So I guess these things are cyclical in in in, in some sense. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And um, uh, during this uh, at Fringe Festival, uh, are you going to participate in any any other program or anything during the week? Can we see you somewhere else? Well, That's we it. do have a thingy. <laughs> <laughs> we have, yeah, we have an event called yeah. Performative Interventions, um, which. It's quite punk, it's quite DIY, it's quite pop-up, so I don't know how much we want to talk about it, really. Um, it's a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but people should look after it. Oh, yes. Here in Toronto, yeah, yeah, so yeah. If you are look for it somewhere yeah. in Toronto. Yeah. The, the, feed, the Feed Collective um, do performative interventions. Yeah. Um, the programme is online yeah. at thefringe.org. Yeah. Uh, the full programme is there. And um, we will be engaging in other events. We yeah. The Fringe traditionally has two spoken word open mic events that kind of open and close the festival. And last year we, we had a Pilsner Poetry event and uh, yeah, three three of the four of us certainly performed our, our work at that. So I'm sure we'll be doing that again as well. Mm, great. And uh, is there anything in the program that you uh, can feel like, oh, this I don't want to miss it for anything in the world or this I should uh, attend to or the on I'm a bit of a, you know, a movie lover, so yeah. I will probably check out the, you know, the, the independent film mm. festival section. Or, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, the the video poetry movies. I'm going to check out this. Right. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to the um, the video poetry as well. It was last year was the first time that we had that section in the, the film festival mm -hmm. program, and there's some some interesting stuff as well. I'm also looking quite forward to a regular daily event. We, we're having uh, Morgan Poetry and Fika Poetry, mm -hmm. um, which I think will be, there's one at nine o'clock every morning, one at 11 o'clock every morning. Will be, if we're working and doing something else, it's the chance to have it on the computer and just treat it like a radio program, really, and some poetry in the background as you're 
getting on with your daily chores. Yeah, and the whole program is online on at the fringe. Yeah, go to at the fringe .org. Great. Uh, so I I understand that this is like you are uh, closing up this project now. So uh, my last question will be, what is your next project? And maybe we will see you in Toronto again sometime. <laughs> Mm, I mean, like, you know, we've been talking about, like, you know, a continuation of the project, but it's still, like, you know, in the works. Uh, but for me, like, I'm a studio-based, you know, visual artist, practitioner, um, so, like, I, I'm just going to go back to painting, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, got, uh, like, uh, maybe some exhibitions planned for the future, but, like, everything is on hold for, because of the yeah. pandemic, so, yeah. don't really know. And would you come back to Charles, maybe? Or yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, yeah. like, the, uh, this is my third visit. Yeah. So, I'm getting to know the place. Yeah, really <laughs> nice. Yeah, you got get used to Charles. Yeah, like a second home. Uh, I started drawing a lot this year. I have uh, some exhibition next year, so I'm gonna work towards that. And I also started writing a book. It's like a more theoretical book about uh, about book art artist books. So the plan is to finish that and publish that till the end of this year. So those, those are the plans for now. Yeah. And hopefully I'll get back to Tronus again. Yeah. Well I, I enjoy collaboration um, and as we've said the, the initial stage of this project we did fairly individual responses to the uh, to the archive. Mm -hmm. But um, Arena has some of my words in, mm. in that book. Mm. Um, and I think one of the collaborative things that I did or tried to do throughout the, the project was respond not only to the letters but to respond to my fellow artists' processes and try and reflect some of our experience in, in, in my poetry. But moving forward, I've been working with a contemporary dancer. Mm -hmm. uh, Stina Nielsen is um, a dancer who specializes in improvisation and we've started to work together um, a performance act called Your Strangest Friend where we enter a space and the only things that we know when we enter the space is how we're going to enter it physically and there may be a trigger line at which point we stop the performance but for 20 minutes we just respond to our environment. I create words in that space at that time, Stina responds to them, I watch her movement and I continue my poetry, if you call it that, um, based upon how she how she moves. So that's. Uh, a performance that we'd like to, to take to a few more festivals. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Okay, thank you so much for this little chat and uh, I hope to see you all again soon and bye for the Thank time. you so much Matilda. Bye. bye. Enjoy the rain. <laughs>